everyone, welcome back to the show. So excited for another great guest, Jonathan Mayotte. Very welcome to have you on the show. Thank How you doing today? Me. Doing great. Thanks for having me. It's uh, rare that we get to have as much insurance conversation as we've had lately without it being related to a claim, which is a positive thing in my life, but it's been interesting to learn a lot more. So I think for, for our audience, maybe it'd be great if you could just start a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do. Sure. Okay. So uh, I've been in the insurance business for, oh, it's about 10 years now, started in 2013. Um, before that, I was a radio disc jockey down in uh, Champaign, Illinois, and uh, I was on air. I was a program director, production director, made the commercials, uh, just one day decided that this was not the line of work that I wanted to be in anymore, and it was time to find something else, and somehow I landed on insurance. Like most people in the insurance business, you don't wake up and say, yeah, I'm going to be an insurance agent when I grow up. It just happens. It's a great industry. And that, that's kind of, um, that's how I landed in that. Uh, prior to that, uh, prior to radio and everything, I uh, grew up uh, originally in Bourbon A, Illinois, about an hour south of Chicago, and then uh, moved to Champaign. That was how I ended up doing radio in Champaign mm -hmm. for as long as I did. Uh, went to Illinois State, uh, got my bachelor's in political science because for about two brief seconds, I thought I was maybe going to go to law school. And after my, I think it was like a 200 level or 300 level Law, constitutional law class, I said, no, this is not for me. <laughs> Didn't you have a similar experience? I think so I was, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to get into it. So I was a pre-law minor in college and I, you know, I went through all the pre-law programs. It was maybe two years or so. And I was met with one of my favorite professors and say, Derek, so, you know, what do you want to do? And my whole plan was corporate law at that point. Right. And he goes, well, let me ask you, you like to read? I was like, I hate to read. He's like, how about writing? I was like, I'd rather read than write. And then, no joke, he goes, law's not for you. I literally <laughs> went into finance after I left his after I left his classroom that day. It was a very impactful, funny, also like cool conversation. It starts down the path. Uh, see, I, I liked the reading part and I liked the writing part. And I still do. Yeah. I just it, it didn't click with me. Yeah. The subject material was not clicking once, totally it, once I got to a certain point. Right. And I would. Oh, conceptually, it's amazing. Well, sure. Yeah. And they would ask you to like write these briefs and all this oh. stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not my style. It's and not my thing. You're reading like a sentence that's like the entire page, like, so, but, like with like a hundred commas in there, too, right? <laughs> you have to parse every <laughs> single word. Every yeah. single, I mean, it, it's like you have to find an interpretation for. And then you need to go to the bottom it, of the page right. to yes. see what the asterisk fucking mark was. I mean, it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah, it's or, a mess. yeah, it's almost like when, uh, what was it, Clinton was asking, uh, <laughs> it depends on what your definition of the word is, is. That's <laughs> on every that, That's how attorneys are. You've got to find out what the definition of the word <laughs> is, is. Yes. I can't. That's just not me. No. <laughs> so, so law wasn't the path. No. What was next? Where so I just go? kept going on. With, I'd already started working in radio when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I did a job shadowing program and uh, I was an intern at uh, the stations that I ended up staying at for 10 years and uh, while I was in college I just stuck with it and by the time I graduated I was promoted to full time I was a program director and the rest was history I stayed at the same group of stations until they were eventually sold uh, there was pretty much a total turnover of the staff once the sale went through and I ended up going and working for a uh, our biggest competitor at the time uh, for about a year and a half. And uh, it was, I think, around the time of uh, being unemployed for a few months where I was mm -hmm. like, ah, I got to find a job. So if it's in radio, great. But I don't think that's the long-term solution. And it all happened right about the time I turned 30, which always seems to be kind of like when people have their Always uh, a career change. Yeah, it's like, or, hmm, what am I yeah. doing with my life? Am I on the right path? And the answer for me was no, and uh, I figured it all out. Well, some of it out. I, yeah. guess. I figured the career part out. Yeah, yeah. 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 I figured the career part out. I think, yeah. and you know, that's yeah. The rest is history, as they say. So that's who, did you, who did you start with insurance? Then? So when I got out of radio, I, not knowing what I was going to do, I ended up moving down to Florida. Uh -huh. 
And my mom was living down there at the time. And I just figured that would be an easy place. That would be a soft landing. I could go down there. And if I needed a place to stay for a little while and look for a job, I could do it. So I was down, I think it was like the second day I was at her place. One of her friends came by and he was going around Florida and I think maybe some other places in the Southeast and setting up these all state agencies and these car dealerships. Hmm. And this was in West Palm beach. And he said, Hey, I just talked to the Chevy dealership and you know, we're going to set up an all state agency there. They need some, they need some bodies in their internet sales department. And he just left it at that. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, is this a full-time job with benefits? And he said, yeah. And I said, great. I need sales experience and those things. So who do I talk to? (laughs) And he said, I'll get you set up. He said, I'll do an email intro. And uh, by the way, once you get in there, start working on getting your insurance license, because you're probably not going to want to stick in the car side of things. And I thought, oh, I'll probably want to stick on the car side of things because my family had owned a car dealership for 80 years. So I grew up around that. Yeah, 80s, no joke. Wow. Yeah, my great grandfather had started it. My grandpa had it, and then sold it in 2000. Oh, like started think. it when cars were coming out. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> they were. He was selling uh, Model A's, and oh, wow. uh, yeah, we have yeah. a uh, we have a service station in my family for about 110 years. This oh wow, year, and it was open. They first started working on carts and buggies and stuff like that. Oh yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, we we used to have a sign that was over the. Um, it was over the cashier's desk that had the prices of the vehicles. Oh. And it was just like one of those magnetic signs. You could get a Model T back then. I think it was like for 600 bucks or something like that. Brand Ridiculous. Is out that, the door. Yeah. Is that just wild to see? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, crazy. For sure. When they got rid of gas at my grandpa's service station, he sold it for one. Prices were when they first started selling gas. So they were selling gas for like 10 or 15 cents a Doesn't gallon. Make it cry. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. And, then, and mind you, this was like 10 years ago. So they literally had to shut I'm that coal for a 15 cent discount at Costco. She gets that, yes. right? Yeah, for Likewise. <laughs> you get that, right? Oh, man. No, I thought I was, I thought, yeah, I'll be fine with the car business because I, I was around, well, as a kid, you're not seeing the the hours and the sweat and tears. You miss goes, the entire. You know, it is a rough business. Of, yeah. yeah, I mean, right. it is very much. You know, it's uh, you, you get one car sold, then it's on to the next one. And I remember uh, my grandmother telling me that she said, "You know, your your grandpa would be." And my mom told me the same thing. She said, "Your grandpa would work from you know Monday through Saturday, eight in the morning until eight or nine at night." And that was his life when my mom and my aunts and uncles were growing up. All I ever saw was when he was in his, you know, 50s or 60s and 70s. And, right, you know, he'd show up at 8 in the morning. He'd leave by noon and, you know, maybe go play golf or just go go home and watch TV. He could do yeah. whatever he wanted to. But uh, it was what I experienced was more like what he had experienced when he was younger and I did realize really quickly, this is not something I want to stick with. I think I like insurance better. Wow. Good and so I got my insurance license and eventually it was a couple of months after I got the license. My mom said, I'm taking a job transfer to Chicago. Do you want to come with? And I said, ah, well, at some point I just got an apartment. I want to write out the lease on it. I think I went into work the next day and I had a bad day. So I called her up when I was driving home. I said, when's the truck? I said, when's the truck leaving? She said, you need a job. I said, I know I need a job. I said, I came down here without a job. I said, I'm going to a place where I know a lot of people. I said, I'll find a job. Don't worry about that. Just tell me how much time I have. Yeah. 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 So we ended up splitting the cost of the move through everything on the same truck. Ended up here and that was that. I've I've been with the same agency the whole time. Wow. Good for you. That yeah. is great. And I'm sorry, the agency is? Thornton Powell. Thornton Powell. Yes. So that's fantastic. Have you now, the whole time, have you always been doing commercial insurance from within? So the whole time that I've been with Thornton Powell, yes. When I was with Allstate, it was a lot of auto policies. Mm-hmm. It was just because we were in a car dealership, it was a no-brainer. Somebody buys a new car, hey, why don't you let us get you a quote? Right. It was yeah. a natural in. Or if you're... Um, you know, walking through the service department, maybe you talk to somebody and say, hey, you know, how much are you spending on your auto insurance? Well, let me get you a quote or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where I started. When I started with Thornton Powell, I needed to learn commercial insurance. And it, it, was, 
it's a process. It's a, I mean, that's when I hear the word commercial and maybe it's because of our real estate brains, it just sounds complicated. I know what commercial real estate deals look like yeah. and it's so foreign compared to a residential transaction. Uh, yeah. It's truly unbelievable. Yeah. A certain policy. I mean, like property insurance is property insurance. There are mm -hmm. certain things on a commercial policy that are a little bit different than a residential policy. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when it comes to insuring an actual structure, it's the same premise. You've got to make sure that it's insured for enough money, that you have the proper deductible, that you have some, you know, make sure you have water backup coverage right. and yeah. things like that. So if you break it down into simplistic terms, yeah, it's kind of the same. But then you start getting into things like you own a house, you don't need business income coverage. Right. Or, you know, you don't, uh, your contents is usually kind of included in the, homeowner's policy. Or the value versus, of this building and its contents right. might be much larger than... You know, exactly. Yeah. Right. You're talking to bigger numbers most right. of the time, too. Is there a scale or a limitation to the size of business that you normally manage? Is there a low end, a or, high end, or... For us, it's usually anywhere, I mean, anywhere between the independent contractor, I would say up to, you know, what a, a mid-market type business. So that could, uh, for... Some industries, some carriers that could be anywhere between like 50 and a million dollars or a hundred million dollars yeah, yeah, in yeah. annual revenue. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it goes all the way from, you know, both those sides. Right. Um, usually if we're working with, uh, you know, smaller businesses, we personally, I like to see the ones that are trying to scale maybe mm -hmm. the startups that, you know, have some good funding and a really good idea uh, behind them. Those are the, I find those to be the most fun ones to work with. Yeah. Because they get, I get to watch them grow from, you know, basically working out of the basement to all of a sudden, hey, we've yeah. got multiple locations now, yeah. we got a whole staff. Oh, That's yeah. just kind of fun to watch. We see that too. We, we, and it's rare because it's a, it's a hard jump to make, but we see investors who start with maybe their first property or house hacking, and then over time they start acquiring properties, and all of a sudden they go into development, and now all of a sudden they have a construction company. And so you see this, this empire grow on the real estate side of things pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same way on our end too. Yeah. Now with the corporate, or I'm sorry, with like the commercial insurance, I would assume, do you have the ability to bundle people? Like I know a lot of insurance brokers that I'll work with, they don't want to do just your house, your home insurance. They want to do your auto or they want to try to cover anything else. Do you guys have that ability? We do and we try to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not mandatory. There yeah. are certain instances where somebody may have their they, they may have certain policies with another agent and they've had those policies there for a long time they have a really good relationship but for yeah. whatever reason that agent isn't able to take care of something that we're able to take care of yep. and you know we don't want to go and interfere with somebody's relationship with them we'll let them know that we can help them with it but it's not mandatory yeah uh, it can sometimes be useful to try to bundle things oh, there see. there are certain carriers oh sure there's certain carriers that'll give you a you know five percent discount or a ten percent discount for having all of your policies just with them yep but then there's other times where based on the nature of the business it makes there's no way it's impossible for us to be able to place all of their policies with the same carrier yeah certain things might be more appealing to one carrier and then the other the other policies that they have may be just a little bit riskier than they want to delve into. So that's, that's one of the advantages of being a broker is that we have access to multiple carriers. Yep. And you can kind of piece it together. Absolutely. To, and I'd also be interested to know, so did you ever do insurance in Florida at all or no? I did. Okay. Because just Florida never, just seems like a completely different animal in terms of insurance, right? You got Maybe the like, reason that insurance is coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> you got stuff like hurricanes. Yeah. You got all that type of coverage where like, if I'm doing a property in Florida, I'm like, I can't even give you a quote because- Commercial or residential. Yeah. Oh, like, sure. Like, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's crazy. It's, so when I was down there, I remember that they, Allstate wanted us to offer homeowners quotes. I never messed with it because it was usually this long paper application that needed to be completed. And I want to say that to quote it, we either had to submit it and then it was, it would take a week or two to get something back. Or there, I think there were some other policy or 
I'm trying to remember. This has been a few years, so I'm trying to remember that there was something that we had to do where like the program was on this like um, DOS based computer system. Shit. And I'm like, there's no, 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 no. Well, I'm not I'm messing out. with it's this. It's usually a good sign. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and for me, why the, the main reason that I didn't really want to focus too much on that was because I knew that the homeowner's insurance market down there was a mess. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that people were very, I mean, I mean, it's like thousands of dollars a year. Oh, yeah. People yeah. had their coverage and they didn't want to mess with it. It's like I have it because well, they have it locked. As long like, as yeah. as long as nobody comes along and says we're not renewing your policy, right. we are not touching this. We don't want to make any changes. Let's just keep things as is. Auto insurance was a little bit easier, just right. because it's like, hey, it's auto insurance, and again, it was just kind of a natural entryway because we were in uh, where we were located in a car dealership. Yeah. Right. But yeah, trying to insure property in Florida. Um, even on the commercial side, I've had a couple of instances where I've worked with some businesses and most of our carriers will insure everything but the property. Yeah. So for us to be able to insure the property, we would have to go to a wholesale broker and get a policy on the excess and surplus lines market, which means it's probably not going to be nearly as competitive yeah. as what somebody may be able to get on a standard market, which is, you know, if we approach one of our carriers like the Hartford or Travelers or hmm. um, Auto Owners is another one that writes in Florida that we work with. So you would actually insure the property, it sounds like, but not the building. Well, right? no, we, not no. the property itself, I guess, the personal property, as in like what the building oh, neither. is. Owned. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Nobody so wants loss. to touch any property. Maybe a total they loss. will do liability policies. They don't want to touch property policies. Wow. Interesting. And again, we can do it, but it's just we're not as competitive. And, it, and part of it also has to do with some of the rules that the state of Florida has when yeah. it comes to uh, who can write insurance policies on property in the state. Yeah. So they want uh, resident licensed brokers to be writing those policies, meaning you are domiciled in the state of Florida. Yeah. I am a non-resident Florida agent. So therefore, so, yeah. So, they yeah. Well, so the like thinking about that in our local market, I guess my question would be twofold. Number one, for people that are applying for coverage, is there anything major that they don't qualify because of? Like, what are the top reasons somebody would not qualify for coverage? Locally, I mean, ooh, I can't really think of anything that would keep somebody from qualifying completely locally. Yeah. Um, there's going to be, there's all, I feel like around here because we don't have the hurricanes or anything like that. I just think we have aging inventory. We, We've got, you know, but for the most part, it's like there's crappy winters. We don't impact. Well, you'll find <laughs> you'll find somebody who's going to write. It's just a matter of who's going to write it. How much are you going to pay? Yeah, and is the coverage any good? So I guess maybe that's a better way to frame it. Is what what impacts maybe your premium or what you're paying the most? Is there a sure. single item that if you're dealing with it, it's probably going to drive your premium the highest? I would say. I mean, there's a handful of things. I would say yeah. that obvi- the obvious one is if you have a bunch of claims, right? Uh, if you have a bad claims history or from other businesses or, or previous uh, endeavors or any, yeah. I mean, just in general, even. just in general. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to insurance, the more claims you have in your history. When they look back over three or five years, uh, the less likely carriers are really going to be excited to try to write your policy. Right. Yeah. The best thing you can do in those situations is make sure that uh, you have a really, uh, this is going to sound funny to say, make sure you have a really good story. Yeah. And I don't mean fudging anything or lying or anything like that. Just make sure that you can clearly communicate, yes, this happened. We've done X, Y, and Z to make sure that it won't happen in the future sure. and yeah. it hasn't happened again. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you just have bad luck. If you can explain it that way and say, look, we, we just had a string of bad luck. We had water f- back up into the basement because the sump pump failed. We replaced the sump pump, haven't had any issues since. Right. We put a battery back up on it. We haven't had any issues. And then the house got struck by lightning. These are all things that are beyond your control. Right. Yeah. So you just need to be able to explain, yes, this happened. And because of that, we've taken these measures to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And that, that could be whether you're a homeowner or a commercial property owner 
or you're a business owner with a workers' comp policy and right. employees are getting hurt, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you are taking steps after you have those claims to make sure that those don't ever occur again. And more yeah. importantly, try to maybe think a little bit uh, ahead of things. Try to think of the worst case scenario. What could happen? What can I do to prevent it so you don't have the claim in the first place? And try to keep the insurance for things that are unavoidable. Major. Yeah. That you, that you, there's nothing you could have done. To well, and that you're leading into my second question perfectly. Mm -hmm. What are some of the top claims that you see? Or, I mean, I'm sure you have a, a hit list of your top offenders. I mean, uh, well, the most common, I think, is probably going to be a, an auto accident just yeah. because yeah. those happen so frequently. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to, to property, I would say water backup cover or water backup claims are always a big one. Whenever, from the sewer or from yeah, something. Whenever yeah. we get, whenever there's a rainstorm, especially if we go back to September around oh, here. we had the massive flooding. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. People were getting just deluged with uh, with water in their basements and there was nothing that anybody could do about it. Um, beyond that, I mean, there, if you're a business there. owner, there's, depending on what it is you do, you're going to end up having some workers' comp claims probably right. unless you're like a, a doctor's office or, you know, a, an accounting firm or something like that. But if you're a contractor, there, there's a reason that certain industries pay more on their workers' comp than others. It's because they expect you to have those claims. Yeah. yeah. So pretty good place to slip and fall if you have to in a hospital <laughs> or a doctor's office. Do well, how, how prevalent is that? How prevalent? Oh, do you so see prevalent. Sure. Really? So prevalent. I'm sure. And From minor to major issues. Yeah. I oh, sure. I mean, that's why whenever there's a claim, I mean, unless it's something that's very cut and dry, like hey, somebody's working in the kitchen, they cut their finger and they needed to go get stitches. That's, that's yeah. an easy one. Or, you know, they were, they, they took a hammer to the, the hand or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I assume particularly it, for manufacturing jobs, you have all kinds of, when it comes to something that like a, a back strain or, you know, something that, um, tore my ACL on the work floor or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like I would say usually it's more like those, probably the soft tissue injuries, the, the types that, you're gonna have to go to a personal train or a, um, a physical therapist for a to, long extended period yeah, of treatment to do that. And, yeah. Oh, I, you know, I can't work today because my back's acting up. I mean, um, there's really, uh, those are the ones where it's a little bit tougher to, uh, to verify I'm sure. whether I mean, again, if it's something where it's like, yeah, I sliced my finger. Well that, the yeah, we gone. can see that. Yeah, we know that we know what happened there. If it was something that required surgery, like an, you said, an ACL tear or something like that. That, that's Have a little bit more, yeah, the doctor's going to be able to prove that. But yeah, there are times where people will definitely melt the system. That's uh -huh. why they, the workers' comp adjusters have to do um, investigations to find out whether or not, uh, the, you know, they'll look into an employee's pr uh, uh, medical records to see whether or not they had prior injuries. Yeah. And, uh, they're they're going to do their due diligence. I would think particularly with the level of coverage yeah. that they have and the number of employees that are involved. And, Absolutely. But I mean, any as we've seen, any industry that has coverage like that where there is a claim to be yeah. filed is going to be wrought with fraud. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, a yeah. lot of claim, and there are so many claims that will go into the six figures. I mean, it's just, right. it's, they've got to do Yeah, between the diligence. damage and then the extensive yep. PT and then, you know. And once those claims pay out, that's when the business owners see their, their uh, premiums go up and it's usually pretty significant. Oh, sure. And at that point, it's like, well, there's really not a whole lot you can do because it's not only covering for the injury, it's covering right. for the, the missed time. So the employee can continue to get paid for not doing anything essentially. So is yeah. that your, if you had a one, like an elevator, not that most business owners probably need it, but if there was an elevator pitch of why a business owner needs to have a comprehensive insurance coverage package, you know, what would it be? Is that it? Ultimately, without it, your business could fold over something as simple as like a slip and fall lawsuit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It could be a slip and fall lawsuit. It could be a, a cyber attack. It could be... Um, oh, I didn't even think about that ransomware. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Uh, wrongful termination lawsuit or discrimination lawsuit or... Those are pretty big now too. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's basically just getting getting sued for something. If yeah. you wanted to just put it in a very... Well, like terms. you said, how many businesses have six figures lying around to settle the lawsuit, the coverage, and yeah. the bills? And if they do, does it make sense to pay the six figures out of pocket or if the policy only costs you 
few grand, right? Wouldn't it make more sense to just pay yeah, a few grand, grand, right? Let the carrier take care of it. And the other thing is too, a lot of these carriers on the commercial side, uh, I just went to a, um, a cyber liability seminar last week for one of our carriers. There's so many different tools and resources that they have that are baked into these premiums yeah. that you can tap into when you need them. Like say, for example, you have a cyber attack, they have access to the cyber forensic investigation team that is already, again, this is already covered in your premium. These are top-notch people that if you wouldn't approach them on your own, you'd probably end up paying double what the carrier is paying because they've got a special rate because they do so much business with them. That's interesting because I, I guess when I think of insurance, I think of it as the monetary payout that comes for replacing damaged items. I guess in my mind, that's sort of where it's locked at. But it is interesting to think that your provider actually has access to resources that can be advocates for your endeavor, in this case, of tracking down, you know, whatever you were attacked cyber. Oh, um, sure. Person. And they'll, I mean, whether it's a cyber policy or or employment practices or right. something else. There's also resources. Or claims, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Depending on the size of your policy and the size of your business, if you're, you know, I would say maybe a mid-sized to larger business, they are going to be providing resources to be proactive to prevent claims. They are going to right. send out. Because it's majorly in their favor to do so. Yeah, right. they're going to, if you're big enough to have a risk manager on staff, they're going to be working with your risk manager to make sure that you're putting all the best practices in place to prevent workers' comp claims, to prevent um, third-party claims, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Um, you know, if it's a cyber policy, you know, they'll make sure that you know they're working with your IT department to close up and uh, close up any loopholes in your network security. If it's employment practices, they'll help you set up your uh, your employee handbook and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, make sure that you have the resources that you need to be able to prevent getting sued for wrongful termination, discrimination, all those things. So, Interesting. Yeah. Now, have rates, I know that we've seen, and this is specific to auto claims, I know, for example, and I've seen in some case homeowners claims, this year the premiums went up quite a bit for people who had existing policies. Did you see that on the commercial side as well, or was that sort of isolated to the consumer? Mm -hmm. I think it's isolated to the carrier almost. Mm. And I'll even just kind of speak to my own experience with my own personal auto policy. Yeah. Our, our rates didn't really go up at all. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And I know yeah. it was hit or miss, like mine didn't either, but then I was sure. talking to clients who were like, I had several hundred dollars higher this year. I'm like, what? Oh, oh yeah. No, I mean, it's hard. very prevalent. I know that yeah. there are a lot of carriers out there that have been raising their rates. Some of which I think it was, I, I want to say I read an article in Cranes, it might have been, may have been Allstate has a bit of an, or it was kind of flagged by the Illinois Department of Insurance, I think. Mm. I, I maybe, maybe I'm getting For the level of investment? Well, it, it had something to do with the rates being increased to a certain amount. You have to make sure that you're reporting your rate increases right. to the state. And they, uh, apparently they, there was something there where there was a little bit of a rift. I can't remember the whole story off the top of my head, but we're just, we're seeing a lot more of the carriers though, over the last couple of years, raising rates. And some of it has to do with, they've paid out a lot of claims, some of yeah. that, you know, especially with distracted driving. That's huh. a huge yeah. culprit. I can imagine that. If you ever want to have a nightmare, yeah. you just look around and drive in Chicago. Oh, well, especially yeah. like, because during COVID, you could switch lanes, you could fly, you could do whatever you want. And then once, now the roads are busy. Now the roads are busy. People kept those driving practices. Yeah. And it's yeah. bizarre. No, I mean, it's, uh, I think with some of the rate increases that we are seeing on the auto side, whether it's commercial, whether yeah. it's uh, personal auto policies, it's a combination of Things like we were just talking about distracted driving or erratic driving, and then two, how much it costs to repair a car now. I mean, that's I, also through the roof. Yes, exactly. So, I was in an accident, unfortunately, last November. I'm oh, fine, but uh, the cost of replacement on the car was crazy. I yeah. was like, that's bad amount of damage for that cost. I'm like, what happened? Because there's all these little sensors in the bumper. Yeah, the airbag goes off. Yeah, you know, it's 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 no, and and the car's like totaled if one airbag goes off. It's crazy. And throw in that. Um, you know the supply chain issues recently, right. so Delays it's for just, months on yeah. So that's I think part of the reason why some of the carriers are 
raising their rates. Right. Not everybody is, but some are. And um, as far as the property side is concerned, uh, we've seen an uptick. Some of it, we've actually seen some increases in this area because of some wind claims that have happened a lot over the last five or ten years. Uh, there's been tornadoes, there's been uh, yeah. the derechos. Or I got to say, though, that it was a tornado like last year, right? Was Absolutely. That this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had yeah. 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 there's, there's been a lot of wind and hail storms. Yeah. And that's, so that's tightened up a lot of underwriting. Um, so we're not quite hurricane territory. No, we are now getting wind damage. We are getting some. The, there's been some changes on the property market, especially for um, uh, commercial properties. Some right. carriers, some of our carriers, actually have gone from doing like a dollar deductible on uh, wind and hail, which means that you have twenty five hundred dollar deductible, and you know you're responsible for twenty five hundred, and then the carrier picks up the rest. They've switched that over to a percentage deductible which means that it's either going to be one, two, or five percent of whatever the replacement cost of the building is. Mm -hmm. So basically if it's a million dollar property, or it's a million dollar replacement cost, take one percent, two percent, or five percent, and that's your deductible. Wow. So you are wow. you could be on the hook for maybe ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars maybe of the claim if you know, your wind gets, or your roof gets blown off, you, you could end up paying for the whole third. A lot of times, too, they've been putting special deductibles just on the roofs. Yeah. Because they're seeing so many of those claims. So, yeah, that's uh, it's made it a little bit challenging. Um, you don't really see that so much on the homeowner side of things. Um, but it's been a little bit of a challenge on the commercial side, especially when it comes to, like, condo associations. Yeah, the large buildings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we actually I remember a couple of years ago when windows were blowing off some of these new construction projects downtown, right? Yeah, so it, I mean, it happens, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So um, now, uh, remind me, you moved to Chicago in what year? It was uh, 2013. 2013. So you've been here now going on what? Eight, Almost eight, 10 years. Almost 10 years. Wow. 10 okay. years for you. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. You are a homeowner in Chicago now? I am. Where do you live? Lincoln Park. Excellent. And how long have you owned in Chicago? I've we've owned since May of last year, so about a year and a half now. So you got to take advantage of those. Well, great, great. What's, <laughs> what's your interest rate? Uh, it's a uh, three. Yeah, uh, that sound nice. I mean, people are getting almost triple that. Yeah, point. I've basically <laughs> been told uh, you're never you just. Don't ever sell. Hold this and hold it. Hold it. And hold it. Yeah. Because yeah. you're basically, it's like you're borrowing money for free. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, and that's such a great deal. Yeah. Do you, what do you, I assume before that you were renting in Chicago. Oh, yeah. um, what What was your sort of inspiration or what, how many neighbors have you lived in in the city? You know, where did your journey begin and, and how did you get to Lincoln Park? So, I've all, so I started out in Lincoln Park and I, I lived in, it was a one unit. Or I'm sorry, it was a one-bedroom condo unit um, that was near Clark and Fullerton. Great spot. It was a total bachelor pad. The thing yeah. hadn't been updated in like 20 years, but it got the job done, mm -hmm. and it was location, location, location. Yeah. And I didn't. I, it, it was pretty reasonable on the rent. Um, so I was there until 2016 when I met my now wife, and then we ended up, we found a penthouse unit in her building that was in Lakeview, technically in Lakeview, is one block north of diversity. So mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we just loved the, the unit. I mean, it had these great views, kind of like this room here, only just a little bit further north. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was like, we can't pass this up, so we just, we, jumped at it we stayed there until um, last year when we bought and so it's pretty much always been Lincoln Park Lake New Area. That's a great so yeah. Yeah. It's a great area it is. years. We find I don't know why, but certain neighborhoods in the city just have a stickiness to them and I find that people once they get into Lincoln Park or Lake you try to come back at some point. I think it's sure. the thing that I miss was our location being right next to the lake, being able to just jump out on the trail and yeah. You'd go for a run or go for a long bike ride, and now we're a little bit closer to the expressway. So to try to jump on the bike and go there, we are kind of on the expressway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel if I'm going to do that, I probably I should get a divvy. Yeah, and I'll just tell everybody I'm not. I'm not from here. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm from out of town. 
Mm -hmm. time. Well, that's amazing. So uh, now I think you were telling us a little bit before we jumped on. So in terms of your home buying experience, it sounded like it actually was pretty smooth. For it you, was. Right? Relatively speaking. It was. We So what ended up happening was um, we were a 2020 wedding. So uh, we had all these grand plans going into 2020 that we were going to have this normal wedding with 150 some yeah. odd people. And yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> we had enough. Yeah. We had about, including ourselves, I think, 20 people in yeah. attendance, and that was it. We had canceled our, I'm sorry, postponed originally our wedding reception, and figured, well, we'll try it again next year. And then when 2021 came around, there was just so much uncertainty that we said, you know what, we're not even feeling it. We, we, we got married already. We don't yeah. want to do the reception. Yeah. So we took the money that we were going to spend on the reception, put it towards, and said, why don't we just put it towards a down? So that was what we did. We got pre-qualified and my wife said, well, you know, maybe I'll just start. We weren't going to like get anything right away. We just wanted to get pre-qualified and figure it out. And then she started looking and I think it was within a day she found something online. See how it starts. That is how it goes. Yeah. She's like, I really like this place. And we'd already talked to the realtor and everything. So uh, it was actually she, the, our realtor. Uh, with her husband were the two that introduced us. Oh, wow. So, That's yeah, great. Oh, yeah. Wow. And the place that my wife found just happened to be a few houses down from where they lived. Yeah. So, as she said, this is like the easiest showing I've ever had to do. Just kind of walk, walk out the front door and walk huh. a couple doors down. God bless the yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, we went over and looked at the place on a Wednesday and I was like, hey, this, is, this is pretty nice. And she said, so are you one and done? And I said, I, I was very quick to jump in and say, no. I said, I love the place, but I said, we got to make sure that we're doing our homework here. Mm -hmm. We need to look at a few other places just yeah, to be, this is a big, big decision. Yes, so yes. let's not just take the first one. But we are interested and we would like to come back and take a look at it. So they were doing an open house, I think, that weekend. We came back and the listing agent made sure he was there to kind of give us the grand tour and mm -hmm. point everything out and really kind of, you know, sell the whole thing. We looked at a few other places and we just, by that night, we were like, let's just put in the offer. So we put in the offer, um, by Monday we were on it, the next day we were under contract. Um, I mean, everything, again, you know, trying to apply for a loan isn't necessarily It's a job. Thing. It's, it's, it's yeah, work, part -time but yeah. it's a part-time job. I feel like, so my wife does tax auditing and okay. I do insurance. So, I mean, we're kind of used to having to, yeah. Yeah. we're kind of used to having to get things together and make sure we get the documents in order. And right. we understood why we were doing what we were doing and why we had to hand over certain things and yeah. stuff like that. There were a few things where we had some questions where it's like, it's not like we were trying to push back or anything. We're like, why do we have to do this? <laughs> oh, 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 okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Like um, uh, what was it? The um, uh, cash to close. That was a, that was kind of a new mm -hmm. experience, but figuring that all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, I mean, it was everything went pretty smoothly on that end, mm -hmm. and we didn't really have any fun stories until after we moved in. <laughs> That's when real homeowners. That's when you're like everybody kept saying, "Oh, you're just gonna uh, you're on the hook for everything," and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, I know. I just hope nothing happens." And sure enough, within. I think a month of being there, um, we had water back up. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Was it from sewer line or from the so city line? It's, uh, we live in a duplex down and we have mm -hmm. the down unit and, um, it, this, I want to say the building itself was probably a single family home. So at some like point, it comes it's in an 18, unit. yeah, it's an eight, I want to say like late 1800s construction. Yeah. So there was, a, I remember in the listing documents and everything that they had mentioned they had a check valve for, or a backflow valve. I said, okay, well, that's great. And we wanted to make sure it worked. And every, they said it worked and okay, fine. Um, me being the insurance person, I said, that's fine. I, I don't care if it works or it doesn't work. We're getting water backup coverage because there's a strong likelihood that at some point something could happen. So luckily we had that, but yeah, what ended up happening was there was uh, there's a flood control pit up in the front, which is where our family room is. 
And this whole area has been, when we bought it, it was carpeted over. Mm. And you could tell that the carpet was about 20 years old. And the people that we bought it from were never the original owners. So they had no clue that there was this pit that was there because it was carpeted over. There was an ejector pump that had been put in there. When we finally got the carpet pulled up and pulled the lid off the flood pit, we saw the date of operation on the ejector pump. It said 2001. Hmm. So, of course, it didn't work. Yeah. So, I'm just kind of surprised that to this point, nothing, I mean, nothing had ever happened. It's a bit lucky. Top. Yeah. It didn't smell like there was any mold or anything like that. When they cut the walls open, you'd say, no, there's no evidence that there's ever been water back. Wow. There. So, so lucky, I guess. Very, very, very lucky. lucky. Yeah. All the downspouts and everything, all the drains on the exterior feed right into this pit. Wow. So, yeah, we had out of time. It, it happened twice within a matter of five days. The first time was when we had the restoration company come out, they pulled everything up. The next time was on a Saturday. They, um, uh, they had not come out to fix the pump yet and everything was torn up. There was nothing to absorb the water. So we had a spare bed, we have a spare bedroom down there too. Mm -hmm. And then that ended up getting hit. Yeah. Because there was nothing to stop the water from going over there. Wow. So the whole basement just got completely, we ended up getting a lot of things upgraded that we had ultimately planned on upgrading. <laughs> we just More didn't want to do it quickly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we pretty much have a whole new downstairs area. Wow. Now, which is great. It looks, it looks a lot better. It looks a lot nicer. We made sure when we went through and redid everything that uh, we tried to take preventative measures in case yeah. we had any more water back up. And crazy enough, the pump ended up failing again this summer. Wow. Good but thing. But the only thing that we lost this time was the uh, the area rug that we had in the family room. Wow. So it was only like a couple hundred bucks. Um, I made a mad dash at 6.30 on a Saturday morning to Menards to get a 16-gallon shop fast. <laughs> yeah. And these big fans. I'm like walking back. I'm like, I got everything we need. Yeah. We went through disappointment. There's have no worse feeling when you come downstairs and you're out like, oh my God, there's water. There's oh water. my God, there's water. Well, there's we water. have an alarm down there now yeah. too. So the alarm Smart. went off and woke us up as soon as it happened. Yeah. So we caught it as it was happening, which was, you know, it, it didn't have a chance to sit or settle yeah. or really cause any problems other than with that rug. We went through and disinfected the floors yeah. and everything by, this was on a Saturday, by Monday. No. You had never known anything happened. Crazy. The well, we you hit the two, uh, like, so A, I have first time buyers who come through, they're one and done. Some are okay with it conceptually. They walk away they're like, this is the one. I don't want to see anything else. I'm in. Others do exactly what you did, and they're like, I have to go tour something else, anything else, yeah. just to like compare, right? And for us, I think it just ended up reaffirming that we were making the right decision because when we weighed out, whether it was the layout of the places that we looked at or the right. location, or we weren't even thinking about schools because we don't have kids yet, right. but we do that at some point, we want to have kids and if we are in a place with nice schools or we're in a nice yeah. area yeah. or in an area with a nice school, which we have Prescott Elementary right, right. on the street. Yeah. It's made, it's, so one of the fastest resurging schools in terms of how well it's right. in the city. It's yeah, and it's, they've won all sorts of awards and everything. The other places that we had looked at, they didn't really necessarily have that is, yeah. and it, just, it wasn't top of mind. It's like, well, that's just a But it makes it better. better. Yeah. It means we can stay here a little bit longer. Right. So, yeah, that was, it, it was nice to be able to reaffirm, though, that this was, in fact, the right spot. We, yeah, we kind of were one and done because it was our first one, but yeah. we just want to Well, just and then the second thing you proved is that what can go wrong will go wrong because absolutely oh, yeah. so it happens nice. all the time. People move in, something fails, something floods, something breaks, something folds. It's just, and it's the way it's going to go. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. And there's been little piddly stuff. We had a foundation crack that had to get repaired. We had... Um, a, a rat's nest that had developed underneath our deck. So we had to, the only solution to that was to concrete over the entire area wow. underneath the deck. Lock them in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, luckily, with this being a condo association, these are all split costs. That's yeah. Good. So that kind of helps. It's not if it's a single family, then we're on the hook for everything. But right. With it being an HOA, we can split it down the middle. It's, yeah. It makes it a little bit more palatable. But yeah, that, that was the one thing that I, you know, 
you hear that from everybody. Oh, there's always going to be something. You never realize it until you actually get in there and you're like, oh, now I get it. Now yeah. Now I get it. One little thing, I, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we came home and um, it was, it had been a little bit chilly out and I flipped the furnace on before we left for the weekend and we came back and the thermostat's reading 61. And I just had the HVAC guy out to look at the thing. I'm like, what's wrong? Oh no, this thing couldn't have done it. This thing's not old enough to go bad. What happened? Mm -hmm. I'm freaking out. I'm already, I'm almost ready to call the guy knowing that's going to be like a hundred dollar charge right off the bat. And then I thought, wait a minute, you know, I did something with the thermostat where I popped the cover off. Let me check that. Sure enough, there were these prongs on there. What if I got loose. crossed? Yeah. And when I put it back in the right way, all of a sudden you hear the furnace go. I'm like, oh, yeah. But it's moments like that when we were renting, I would just go, yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah. yeah come on. Guy. You can't do it. I'm the maintenance guy. It is crazy how much your pride of ownership, I guess, steps yes. up when it's yours. Maybe it's out of necessity. Because it's you, I think it's probably out of necessity. You, know, you certainly don't want to under maintain things and then have them break. I've learned how to do a lot of handyman stuff that I <laughs> never in a million, like fi replacing light fixtures, doing concrete stuff. I'm like, well, this is why, and you're a prime example of the reason we say when you buy a house, you need to have money saved for the what if category. Mm -hmm. Many people don't have a what if, and that's great. Save that money, you can do renovations and everything else, but others do. And sometimes that what if is significant. So you need to have funds available. I mean, insurance obviously is gonna assist with some, and that's why we do that, but you still need money to pay for what you need to pay for. Oh, sure. And I can give you uh, some numbers, I guess, like on our water backup claim, we had a $25,000 limit, and we went a little bit beyond that. Yeah. Um, part of that was by choice. There were certain things that we wanted to do that weren't going to be covered in full by insurance because it wasn't light quality. So yeah. we it was like, well, we want to upgrade this. Fine. Okay. But that was not a big deal. But I, it was a few grand that we ended up spending out of pocket. Yeah. And, you know, that wasn't exactly pleasant. We hadn't exactly planned on spending spending that money, but we at least had it available to, to cover it. So, right. Yeah, that, that's, again, make sure you're properly insured yeah. and do make sure that you have a few bucks set aside for that rainy day because when it does rain, it'll pour. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, uh, is there anything that you, we always give an opportunity for you to ask our audience if there's something that you're seeking in your business, uh, and I'm literally down to I'm hiring and I want people, or if you're seeking clients, who your ideal client is, whatever you would like to ask, we'd love to, to be a mic for you. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I'm always looking for new clients. That's always a good thing. Um, if I feel you would answer that negatively, you'd be pretty having a different conversation. <laughs> 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 it's it's the wrong guy that doesn't want any clients. Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Who good. wants them? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, always good with new clients. Um, ideal clients for us. So our agency is a full service independent insurance agency. So while I'm working with commercial business owners on their property, their liability, workers comp, things like that. We're able to do home and auto insurance. We uh, do group health and benefits, typically for small businesses up to about 50 employees. And uh, we also do life insurance and um, uh, long-term disability policies, things like that. So to narrow that down, who's, a good, uh, who's an ideal client for me personally, it would be the business owner, um, specific industries to be anything from professional services, uh, law firms, uh, healthcare providers, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. But we do have a lot of uh, capabilities with multiple different industries. So that's, that's our story. That's great. That's perfect. And we'll make sure we link website, uh, how to contact you, anything else you'd like us to share, we'll make sure that we get that linked in the bio as well. So Thank you, I appreciate it. Awesome, well, thank you again for the time. Yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. Like, subscribe, follow, share this if you found it relevant. We're gonna do a lot more of these conversations, but we appreciate your time today, and we look forward to talking with you again in the future. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Take care.